What in the hell are dippy eggs and soldiers? The Brits have a funny way with words. Dippy eggs and soldiers are essentially just soft boiled eggs with a beautiful runny yolk dip in little sticks of toast, or as the Brits call them, soldiers, to resemble the soldiers that they got running around all over there. Now as a kid, this was my favorite way to eat it. It's fun, toast with runny egg to me is the best part of egg. And in my opinion, this is the most underrated egg dish there is. And I haven't had it in years. But before we make that, we need to talk about soft boiled eggs. Now you can't really just drop eggs in boiling water and get soft boiled eggs. You gotta know a few things. Cooking soft boiled eggs come with far too many variables and there's far too many instructions on the internet to be able to rely on any single one. So like any good chef, you've gotta try and find the way that works best for you. And the three variables we're gonna discuss today is room temp eggs versus fridge cold eggs, the egg size, and the cooking time of the egg. Now here we have a room temp egg and here we have a fridge cold egg. One's 54 grams, one's 55 grams. To me, it's close enough. Now the idea behind room temp eggs is that with the room temp, you prevent the risk of the egg shell cracking as it dips into the hot water. It cooks a little bit faster and more evenly. And the idea behind the cold egg is that it prevents overcooking, keeps the yolk runny longer, and reduces the amount of carryover cooking that happens, which is also a variable in this recipe. So I'm gonna drop these into the boiling water for five minutes, which I think is an average of what I've seen across the internet and what has also worked for me in the past. So we've got our room temp egg on the left and our fridge cold egg on the right. Gently drop them into the simmering water and set a timer for five minutes. Like we said, carryover cooking is a variable. So to control that, I'm gonna get a bowl full of ice water so that we can shock both of the eggs as soon as they're cooked. And we don't really want the water boiling or else they'll knock them around and potentially break the shell. A nice simmer will do just like this. And then after five minutes, gently get them out of the water, gently drop them into the ice bath, and then pat dry. So here we have the room temp egg, and here we have the cold egg. And to get the egg out, you just wanna gently crack all around that shell, and it should peel off smoothly. One thing I'll note is that the room temp egg is a lot easier to peel than the cold egg. Then we can cut them in half and take a look inside. Both eggs are fine, but one clearly looks a bit better. But that's not to say you can't use cold eggs, you would just have to adjust the timing of it if that's the route you wanna go. And as they say, there's many ways to skin a cat. All we're doing is finding the way we wanna use. Now, why you might want an egg like this for a particular reason, this is clearly the better cooked egg. That is on board with the consistency that I'm looking for in this dish. So the path I'm going down is the room temp egg. Now, maybe you don't want the whites fully firm like I chose. Maybe you wanted it a little looser. That's totally fine too, but now you know the difference. This is all about calibrating your cooking to achieving the type of soft boiled egg you're looking for. So now we're going with room temp eggs, which these here are. The next variable is egg size. Now generally when you shop for eggs, if you shop for small eggs, that's gonna affect the cooking time. But who shops for small eggs? I always go for large or extra large. So be mindful, once you've done this test, it's nice to try and use the same size consistently so you're never throwing off your recipe. I'm not gonna tell you to get the same exact size eggs, just get in that ballpark. But if you use one that's 40 grams, that's gonna make an impact. Next is cooking time. Now we've tested five minutes. But maybe you don't like the yolk perfectly runny. Maybe you like it a little bit more jammy. Maybe you want the whites a little looser, especially for something like a dippy egg. So we're gonna be testing four minutes, five minutes, and six minutes. And then again, to control carryover cooking, we're gonna be shocking them in cold water. So again, with the water gently simmering, I'm going to carefully and gently drop these eggs into the water. Then I'm gonna set a timer for six minutes and get a bowl full of ice water. And because I'm testing it three times, I'm going to pull the first one at two minutes, then drop it in the ice water to stop the cooking. The second one at one minute, and the third when the timer runs out then onto some paper towel to dry. Then we can remove the shells. And like I said earlier, you wanna make sure you crack all around the shell. And this first egg, I did not, so it became a little tough and broke the egg. If there are parts of the egg shell that aren't completely cracked, it might tear the egg white. So just try and crack the whole shell well. Now, as you can see, you've got a range of eggs. This one's still totally suitable, four minutes, with a little bit of jiggly whites 
Maybe that's what you like. If you even like the whites more jiggly, I'd suggest trying the three minute soft boiled egg. If I was served that, I wouldn't be mad. Five, as we've discussed earlier, seems to be a sweet spot for me. There's just a little loose white, but it's mainly a nice runny egg. And then six minutes, if you're one of those picky eaters who doesn't like it too runny, this is the perfect medium. It's jammy on one side of the egg and then runny on the other with a fully cooked white around it. You could still dip an egg into that, but four dippy eggs, I wouldn't go past six minutes. We've learned a few things. I like my soft boiled eggs cooked when at room temp. And I know five minutes is the cooking time that I prefer. So now let's make our dippy eggs with soldiers. And let's assume you didn't take your eggs out to room temperature. What we can do is place them in a little container, fill it up with roughly about room temp water, around 70 degrees. And then after a bit of time, you can take them out and they're nice and room temp. So now we're gonna need three eggs some nice bread to make some toast, which will then cut into strips and those will be the soldiers. And then some room temperature butter. Now for the sake of this video, I'm gonna toast this bread first, then cook the eggs. But ideally, you would make the toast while the eggs are cooking. But I'm a notorious bread burner, so I'm gonna do them separately. And I've got this fancy little toaster that uses steam to make nice toast. I, you don't need this, a regular toaster will do, but we do wanna toast these really perfectly if we can. A nice golden brown along the entire surface of each side. Give them a nice flip so they toast evenly depending on your toaster you may not have to do this but once we've got nice evenly toasted slices of bread we're gonna immediately go over get that room temperature butter and spread edge to edge even layer of that butter all over the toast it's gonna melt into the bread and then it's gonna create this beautiful sheen that helps the bread almost glisten it's about as perfect of a slice of toast as you're gonna get. Then we're gonna take a knife, we're gonna take those pieces of toast, and we're going to carefully trim off the edge crust of each slice of bread so we have a perfect square of toast. Then we're gonna season with a little salt, and I'm gonna start cutting our soldiers. You want equal, uniform sticks standing at attention in line, just like British soldiers. And then on the plate, I'm gonna set the eggs just as a placeholder, and I'm gonna build a little log cabin, a little tower of those perfectly toasted soldiers, and then we can move on to cooking the egg. To me, one of these towers is part of the fun of it. If your mom was fun, she probably did this. Maybe your mom just threw them on the plate. But for me, it tastes a little better when those soldiers are in a nice little tower like this. Now we can go ahead and cook the egg. Again, we're gonna gently drop in the three eggs into that gently simmering water, set a timer for five, minutes. Then after five minutes, we're going to get them out of the water, dry them off, and with a knife, you want to crack the top of the egg, and then with the sharp edge of the knife, just cut the top of the egg off to release a hole to access the yolk. Repeat that with the rest of the eggs, and then get them into that little beautiful ramekin cup. And then finally, we just want to season the eggs with a little salt and pepper. Now you may have noticed I overlooked one little thing, a little hole in my test. Leading up to making those eggs, I dropped every test egg into an ice bath. And for the dish, I did not. As a result, the yolk is still runny, but it is jammier, a little bit more viscous. Not exactly the same result as the five minute egg shocked in water. So I wanted to test one more thing. A four and a half minute egg that is not dropped in an ice bath, and then a five minute egg that is just quickly dropped in an ice bath long enough for you to be able to handle it and touch it with hand. I wanna see if you can get the same result two different ways. So gently drop two roughly 55 gram room temp eggs into simmering water, set a timer for five minutes. After four and a half minutes, remove one egg and don't shock it in the water. Just dry it and then after that five minutes is up, remove the last egg, drop it into that ice water, just enough until you can handle it comfortably with your fingers but not too long. We still want a warm egg. Then we're gonna crack the four and a half minute egg that we allowed to carry over cook. And it's pretty inconsistently cooked. It's runny but there's a little bit of fully cooked yolk. Now let's try the five minute egg quickly shocked. Remove the top of the egg and the whites fully set and the yolk is beautifully runny. And while the four and a half minute egg was still runny, you could see there wasn't as much yolk and it was much more cooked yolk. This shows the power of carryover cooking, and if you don't account for it, your results may be a little bit off. Going forward, I'm doing the five minute egg with a quick shock in ice water to get the perfect soft boiled egg. I mean, the china the eggs sit in, the shape of the toasts, it just does it for me. You do the work, you find out how you like it, and then you'll never have to do that work again. You can enjoy these eggs the way you like forever. Recipe's gonna be down in the description. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself, go feed yourself.